What's going on guys? My name is Brandon and today we've got some stick welding to do and we're going to try to do it on some real thin metal. Welcome back guys. So I get a text message from my wife and it says someone is rough on equipment and it's got a picture of our little flower thing with the handle broke off. Well I immediately knew what happened. So I go outside and I see this. Now this handle used to be attached to here. Well, my grandson, who's 15 months old, loves to yank on that handle and has apparently <laughs> broken it off. Did you bust the handle off your grandmother's flower cart? <laughs> your mama used to do that. <laughs> I know that you guys like to try to weld thin metal using your stick welder, so today let's see if we can fix this doing just that. That's pretty thin. I don't know if we can do it, but we'll try. And we're in the workshop, and of course I pulled this off the dump naturally. This is uh, pallet wood. It was missing this, so let's see where it broke off. Take a closer look at it. You can see this. That's where it broke, right there, the weld. You can see it broke there. Flip it over. You can see that's where the weld broke off there. So, pretty thin stuff. Let me grab a gauge and see what we're working with, but it's super thin. So, this is some sort of oddball thickness that we're working with here. I'm just using my material thickness gauge. You guys see me use this in a lot of my videos that I do. So, it's thinner than eighth inch, but it's bigger than 14 gauge. So yeah, it's some sort of oddball material. Now the other piece is a lot thinner. Now this handle part that we're going to weld back on, that's a lot thinner. That's 22 gauge. So this will probably be the thinnest metal I've ever welded with a uh, stick. So we'll see. It's going to be hard. But I'm going to try. So originally this handle was attached like that, okay? And so it acted like a lever or a fulcrum. You can see how there's nothing back here supporting this. It's not, I mean, this is really tiny. I mean, compared to my finger, look how small that metal is. So I think what we'll do is we'll put a little piece of thicker metal across here. Let me show you. So this could be interesting. I've got a piece of 3 16 flat bar, so that'd be fun. Welding 3 16 to 22 gauge. That could be quite challenging, but this is what I'm thinking. I'll drill a couple holes in this flat bar here, then that'll allow it to screw right onto this. And then our handle, we can just weld that little sleeve onto that, right? It only takes an extra second to use one of these vices and clamp your workpiece in it. Uh, sometimes I'll be in a hurry and I'll just walk over to the drill press and drill a quick hole and then the hole will fetch up and then it will spin around and break the bit. No good. So the next thing we're going to do is we got to prep this metal up. We're going to have to do a real good job. So we're going to get this down to bright shiny metal and we're also going to get this piece down to bright shiny metal because right now it's got some paint on it but we got to be careful we don't grind too much or else we're not going to have any material left so we got to make sure we just grind off just enough of the paint without taking too much of the metal away because it's super thin it's like sheet metal this is going to be hard guys hey that's what makes it fun if it was easy everybody would be doing it like I said, this is going to be real challenging. This is the thinnest metal that I've ever stick welded. MIG welding wouldn't be too bad. Even TIG welding wouldn't be bad. But stick welding, that's stretching it. I'm going over this with a flap wheel. You can see it's uh, 80 grit. Nothing fancy. Just taking my time. Don't want to take down too much metal. Getting the mill scale off this piece here. And then I just end up putting a center mark on it and lining it up. All right. Now that we've got our metal all clean and shiny. We'll hold it up to roughly center on our plate, clamp it down. There we go. That looks good to me. So for rods, guys, we're going to be using 16th inch 6013s. If you're wondering why I'm using these, I'm going to put a link up above uh, because I go in depth on polarity, uh, electrode positive, electrode negative, and what size rods work best with welding. 
thin metal. So if you haven't seen that video, the link will be up above. It's pretty in-depth, covers a lot of things. So for this repair, I'm going to be welding electrode negative, meaning that this part of the machine is attached to the negative terminal on this. And the reason for that is that it has the least amount of penetration, which we don't want. We don't want to dig right in. We want to just, we're going to have to probably almost like spot tack it. I have a video on welding thin metal with 6013. I'll put a link up above. How many video links can I do in this video? I know with these rods, they recommend uh, around 20 amps. I'm going to start out at 15 because this is pretty thin. Uh, but the reason I love this welder, and this is my go-to welder, I love it. It's got a hot start feature, and it's got arc force. And this is just, it's got a nice, crisp start on the weld. So for that reason, I love this welder. And it makes it great for welding thin metal. These rods are real springy, so you can see how I'm actually grabbing the rod with my other hand to hold it. And the other hand is kind of like what, what is striking it. And you're striking it like a match. And then I'm just putting on little tacks, chipping it away, little tacks, chipping it away because I don't want to burn through. It's working, guys. It's actually working pretty good. And I don't want to hear anything in the comments about me not grinding back my, my welds. That's... Foolishness. For something like this, it doesn't matter. Trust me. It's not structural. Oh, I burned through there. I, I'm just testing the limits to see how far I can go before it gets too hot. So it looks like a quarter of an inch in length or so is about the limit that I can go before I have to uh, stop and let it cool. So what I'm doing guys, is I'm focusing almost all of my rod angle into the heavy plate so that the plate is actually what's kind of like washing back into this so that it doesn't burn it through. Trust me, this won't be pretty, but it'll hold. So now I've got it turned up on end. I'm going to try to get creative now that I've got some weld metal built up that's bonded to the thinner part and actually try to cap it without burning through. I don't know if I can, but the first pass worked, so hopefully the second will. So putting a cap pass on it was not necessary. It's just an experiment I wanted to try to see if I could put a layer over all my start and stop tacks. Still not pretty, but it's holding. Let's uh, weld the other side. So far it's been successful. I see that gap right there? That gap, if that's not closed up, that's going to be a weak point. That'll, that'll make it real easy to blow through this and burn through. So you want to try to get your gaps, any gaps that you have, try to get them closed up best you can. It's going to give you the best fighting chance to get a good job. Typically this would be a good repair with MIG, but you know, not everybody has MIG, and you know, I, I like doing things with what I have. So if, if you have a, you know, an inexpensive, even an AC buzz box or AC DC welder, and you can get the amperage low enough, yeah, you can do some pretty uh, intricate repairs. Hmm, I tried something different there. As you can see, I ran one continuous bead holding the rod right against this metal here and not so much at the toe of the joint. Let's see if it was enough to hold it. You know some guys, it actually worked. I'm actually surprised that it didn't completely make a hellacious mess. It This side came out worse. The second side did burn through in a couple places, but um, you know, for the most part, we're, you know, we're welding, what, 3 sixteenths to 24 gauge? That's like 10. So, yeah, I'm impressed. It worked. So, I think the next step is we're just going to paint this up and uh, call it a repair. So, it's not pretty, but a grinder and paint is what the welder ain't. So, 
I consider that a success. All it has to do is hold. It doesn't have to look good. Stick welding really isn't the process for this real thin metal that I'm using here. But, you know, that's kind of the point of doing these videos. You know, you can see there, it doesn't look that great. It's nothing that would be presentable. But, um, you know, could you do it if that's all you had? And that's kind of what I like to do on my channel is, you know, rather than throw something away, uh, actually try to fix it and reuse it you know this buggy I picked up off the dump I'll put a link up above of what this started out to be but you know my wife and I we've had this for years and uh, you know she loves it we put it on our deck and whatnot but you know it broke off and if that's all someone had was a uh, little small stick welder and they wanted to put it back together versus shooting it out in the trash and hopefully videos like this would give someone the confidence to go ahead and try to fix it rather than throw it away you know we don't all have you know a whole pile of money to go out and buy a dedicated machine for everything you know a, a good repair for this would have been MIG but you know not everybody has MIG so you know stick welders are affordable and a lot of people have them so you know let's see if we can try to fix it with it and I consider this a success seriously there it is guys and these are all uh, stainless steel screws probably didn't really need them but I had them, so I figured I'd use them. Now if he wants to tear this thing up, he's going to have to work at it. It doesn't just have this little tiny strap now, it's got this strap here. So, he can do pull-ups off this now. And that's all there is to it, guys. I want to thank you for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you want to find out what I'm working on before it even makes it up to YouTube, you guys can find me on Instagram and on Facebook. The links will be down below. I always upload behind-the-scenes stuff, stuff you don't see here. And if you guys want to see more welding and fabrication videos, I'll have links up above and down below. You can check out my playlist. And I also got a beginner welding series. I upload new videos every Friday, so if this is something that you like, please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys next week. Until then, stay safe. See ya. Come, come.